Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, we are going to be tackling the incredibly difficult and complex question of what is Jeet Kune Do? I'm going to start off by reading you a piece of a letter that Bruce Lee wrote to Wang Shenlong, which was one of his Wing Chun instructors. In the letter, he says, Since I started practicing realistically in 1966 using protectors and gloves, etc., I feel that I had many prejudices before and they are wrong. So I changed the name of the gist of my study to Jeet Kundo. Jeet Kundo is only a name. The most important thing is to avoid having bias in training. In this video, we are going to be tackling Bruce Lee's development of Jeet Kune Do. We're going to be looking at the kind of conflict between this Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do group and Jeet Kune Do Concepts group. And then finally, we're going to be looking at the misuse of the term Jeet Kune Do that a lot of times mixed martial artists will use. Before we get too deep into the weeds, I do want to address some of my own biases, but also my credentials to talk on the subject. I've studied martial arts for the past 25 or so years. In that time, I've earned a second degree black belt in Judo, a fifth degree black belt in Kenpo. I'm a certified instructor in Wing Chun. But of all the pieces of paper that I hang on my wall, the one that I'm most proud of is to be a full instructor in Jeet Kune Do. We'll get more into the difference between the two, but to acknowledge my own biases on the subject, I am a part of the Jeet Kune Do concepts lineage. Like I said, we'll get into that. Let's first start off by looking at Bruce Lee's development of JKD. Bruce Lee's upbringing was really unique. That Bruce Lee was, you know, raised in China and came to America and studied philosophy and then became famous back in China, um, that he had, uh, in, in Hong Kong, um, he had a very eclectic upbringing. And he really fancied himself as a philosopher, not just a martial artist. In his early stages of his martial arts development, he was a diehard Wing Chun practitioner, which is a style of Chinese Kung Fu. And then as he continued to educate himself in the world of martial arts, as he would have sparring matches with other martial artists, he would notice that there are some inefficiencies in Wing Chun as he knew it. So he begins to kind of develop his own style of martial arts by combining some principles from other Chinese martial arts as well as Western boxing, um, and he begins to teach that as well. This book here, Bruce Lee, Letters of the Dragon, is a collection of letters that he wrote to people throughout his lifetime, starting from some of the earliest days to literally you know, his last few days on Earth. And it's in this book that you can really see the development of his way of thinking. Because in the early parts of this book, he very much is very clearly attempting to make a new style of martial art that he even names after himself. He calls it Jun Fan Gung Fu. His um, name is actually Jun Fan. And so it's Bruce Lee's martial art is effectively what he calls it. Um, and as you read the book, you see him advising other martial artists um, that are, you know, training under him as he sends them letters and says, you know, I, we aren't really going to do things this way anymore. We're going to change the name of this. That really in the early stages of Bruce Lee's development, Jeet Kune Do, as it was coming to be, was very much a style. He even certified some people in Jun Fan Gung Fu specifically, and then eventually would move away from that name. As he continues to be educated in the world of martial arts, he incorporates principles from boxing. He incorporates principles from uh, small circle jujitsu and in judo. He even has a lot of Filipino influence from his student Dan Anasanto, who knew a lot about Filipino martial arts, and to, which is an understatement. <laughs> um, 
but Bruce Lee really, you know, kind of grew the system and wanted it to be a, a system that really had it all. That he saw that in the world of martial arts, there's people who are really good at punching but didn't know how to kick, people who are really good at kicking but didn't know how to grapple, people who are really good at grappling but didn't know how to punch or kick. And so he very much was trying to put together a system that would encompass the totality of fighting. The way he looked at it was that you need to know how to punch, how to kick, how to trap, and how to grapple. And grappling included throws, pins, and submissions, like breaking someone's arm or choking someone out. Now, by the time Bruce Lee passed away, much of his views on what made a martial artist um, effective had moved away from this principle of a style-based study. In his famous interview, I think it's like the only real long interview of him, he says, I don't believe in styles anymore. Uh, it, it's hard for me to quote it directly, but he effectively says something to the lines of, until there are people who have, you know, six arms and six legs, we're all effectively just going to be fighting the same way. That there isn't a karate way of fighting or a Chinese way of fighting or any kind of way of fighting. In doing, saying that, he's also saying that there's not a Bruce Lee way of fighting as well. And you see that this principle starts to change. During the days where he had his Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do or Jun Fan Gung Fu and he was, you know, really trying to put together a style, he had opened schools and certified instructors and, and was really trying to spread it as a system like karate or Wing Chun that would be kind of a marketable thing. As he continues to study, he realizes that the, his skill is primarily derived from his inherent rejection of style. It was because he moved away from Wing Chun and studied other ways of doing things that he was able to develop and realized that in many ways by solidifying his art into kind of a curriculum, a particular method, by doing that, he's almost imposing the same kind of restrictions on his students as he broke away from. And so in his mind, the principle of what Jeet Kune Do is actually changes throughout his life, that it starts off very much as a style of Kung Fu, then it becomes no, it's more of just a, a general style of martial arts, and by the end of his life, it's not a style at all. He closes down all of the schools, starts teaching some people in his backyard, um, and his last commission to his instructors was to keep the numbers small, but the quality high. So that kind of takes you through, generally through his journey from being a very traditional Kung Fu man all the way up to being a guy who was really more about liberation, was more about allowing people to explore the world of martial arts. So that brings us into the modern day. Now, in the world of Jeet Kune Do, there's plenty of politics that go on, as, as it happens in every martial arts. And I would recommend, if you are new to the world of martial arts, avoid those politics like the plague. Ultimately, both sides have a lot of good information that you can take from it. Go ahead, steal from them, and ignore their politics. But I will say, in the Jeet Kune Do world, you effectively have two camps. You have the people who we call Jun Fen Jeet Kune Do, and you have the camp of what we call Jeet Kune Do concepts. Now, this may be a simplification, but ultimately I don't want this to be a five-hour video. The Jun Fen Jeet Kune Do camps are the people who believe in teaching Jeet Kune Do precisely the way Bruce Lee taught it. Bruce Lee died at a really early age, in his early 30s, and he absolutely was not finished with his project that he calls Jeet Kune Do. Um, it was a work in progress and for the people who are in the Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do camp, their view is kind of along the lines of, you know, that, that they don't really have the authority to change it or possibly that just Bruce Lee was so correct in his final moments um, that what he was doing was exactly perfect and shouldn't be modified. And so the Jun Fen Jeet Kune Do people tend to teach things just the way Bruce Lee did, um, either out of a profound respect for Bruce Lee and his work, or uh, it may just also be that they just think Bruce Lee at that time was perfectly correct and nothing needs to be changed. 
On the other side, we have the Jeet Kune Do Concepts people. And the Jeet Kune Do Concepts people is more people who continue to grow the art forward and push it forward. The idea is Bruce Lee was not finished, but he had started this rock rolling in a particular direction and it was easy enough to kind of figure out where that rock would have been going throughout the time. Because Jeet Kune Do is so philosophical and there's so many principles and there's a lot of, you know, kind of, you know, mantras that aim you in the right direction, the Jeet Kune Do concepts people continue to add, change, modify their Jeet Kune Do as new information is given to them. So if you were to take Bruce Lee and plop him into the modern age, the Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do people, he'd look at them and say, yep, that's exactly what I was teaching um, as far as, you know, uh, like how to punch, how to kick, the, the raw curriculum. And he would look at the Jeet Kune Do concepts people and probably say, yeah, that, that seems like that, that's where that would have gone or um, that's what I was thinking. Now, of course, I can't tell you exactly if that's what Bruce Lee said or did because, you know, I didn't know the guy. But, but that's kind of the thought is that, so you have the Jun Fen Jeet Kune Do people who preserve precisely what Bruce Lee was teaching at the time. And then you have the Jeet Kune Do concepts people who uh, more so take what he was doing and have continued to run with it. A great example of that would be Dan Anasanto, who in his time has incorporated Filipino martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, catch wrestling into uh, what he teaches. Whereas there's other people like the uh, like Taki Kimura, who during his time, he very much just taught precisely what Bruce Lee taught him um, exactly as it was taught. So that's kind of your two different camps. They conflict with each other for the obvious reasons that these are two very opposing views. One says like, yes, we should keep Jeet Kune Do this way. And the other says like, no, Jeet Kune Do should grow. Now, my personal opinion, and of course this is my opinion, um, is that I think Bruce Lee, just judging by what I've read and obviously you know, studied along the path of becoming an instructor, uh, every, everything kind of insinuates that he would be fairly upset to walk into a room of everybody doing things exactly the way they did in the 60s here in you know, the 2020s. That I think he probably would have wanted the system to continue to grow. Which brings me to this other principle, which is Jeet Kune Do is not just combining a bunch of systems. So the core mantra that we have in Jeet Kune Do is this four-step process. And whether you're in the Jun Fan camp or the Concepts camp, you live by this four-step process. We say, research your own experience, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and then make everything uniquely your own. A lot of times it gets misquoted as just absorb what is useful, discard what is uh, useless. Uh, but the truth is it's a four-step process. There's the research, the absorption, the discarding, and then the modification. Um, and that's really where a lot of people get messed up is that I've seen two sides of the coin. I've seen people clearly doing Jeet Kune Do and saying it's not Jeet Kune Do. And I've seen people clearly not doing Jeet Kune Do and calling it JKD. So let's talk about the first one. So a really popular YouTuber is this guy named, I think it's Rokus. Um, he does the martial arts journey. He's a formal Aikido guy and now he's crazy in love with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And he did an interview with a Jeet Kune Do, former Jeet Kune Do teacher who said that Jeet Kune Do doesn't work and I had to throw it out and now, now I'm just doing what works. But when I watch the interview with him, it sounds a lot like he's still doing Jeet Kune Do. It very much to me sounds like this guy is, is adhering to the principles, teaching those principles, but has continued to adapt and modify as new information comes in, which is that Jeet Kune Do concepts branch of things. Now, he has thrown out the name of Jeet Kune Do, which maybe is a good thing for him. But ultimately, to say that Jeet Kune Do doesn't work and then proceed to do Jeet Kune Do and make it work, th that's very frustrating to me because he's doing a great job and producing great fighters using Jeet Kune Do and then he's saying, well, you know, Jeet Kune Do is bullshit. But the truth is he had studied some bullshit um, or some JKD people have, you know, headed in the wrong path. But ultimately, if the 
process is to research your own experience, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and make everything uniquely your own, then if your shit's not working, it just inherently isn't Jeet Kune Do. That you should be discarding what is useless. Now, if the individual is bad at discarding what is useless, well, that would make them bad at Jeet Kune Do. Because ultimately, when I was younger, I used to think Jeet Kune Do was for everybody. Now that I've been in martial arts for a while, I, honestly, I think Jeet Kune Do is a more scholarly approach to martial arts. It is not for everybody. If you're somebody who wants to take everything at face value and not dig deep, JKD is probably not for you. Jeet Kune Do is a thinking man's martial art uh, for sure. Then we have the other side of the coin where you have people who, you know, they'll do karate and judo and some catch wrestling and they'll call it JKD. They've never studied in a Jeet Kune Do school or anything like that. And they'll just say like, ah, it's Jeet Kune Do because I, I read the title of Jeet Kune Do and, and you know, I'm following, I'm following that. Um, you know, I, I, I would have an issue with people calling that JKD because it's still missing a lot of the core tenets. Because ultimately, Jeet Kune Do is not just mashing together systems. It is about totality. One of my instructors, Dan Anasanto, always says that a Jeet Kune Do practitioner knows Muay Thai, but doesn't have the Muay Thai look. They know Wing Chun, but don't have the Wing Chun look. They know Judo and don't have the Judo look. Why is that? It's because Jeet Kune Do is ultimately about totality. That's what the arrows in the logo, I, I'm not wearing a JKD logo. Um, this is my school logo, but we have the JKD logo here. That's what these arrows are, is that they represent totality. That they represent not just simply taking in this information, but synergizing it, making it work together in a way that, that that it kind of loses itself. It's not a matter of being like a video game character that switches from style to style. Oh, I do karate out here and now I'm in judo mode. It's that your karate has a lot of judo in it and that your judo has a lot of karate in it. I'll give my own example to this, that a lot of people don't have a lot of respect for Wing Chun and I understand why, that there's a unreasonable amount of people who just suck at fighting who do Wing Chun. Um, but what I will say is that studying Wing Chun improved my Judo. Now, how, how does that work? Well, a big part of Judo is a thing we call Kumikata, which is grip fighting. How to get a hold of a sleeve, how to get a hold of a lapel, how to get a good grip so I can throw this guy to the ground effectively. Well, the trapping systems of Wing Chun, the Chi Sao of Wing Chun, which is all about navigating your way around people's hands so that you can get a punch, that, that method of, of fighting really uh, works quite well in judo. And so my judo got better as I started studying Wing Chun. Uh, uh, the opposite way goes into it that I tr I've, uh, once a year I go and I train uh, at a big conference of Wing Chun guys. And most of the guys are very bad at the takedowns in Wing Chun. They just don't understand really how to do a takedown. They can demo it, but they don't really know how to do them. Well, because I do judo, which has so many takedowns, a lot of the principles of judo I just can apply into the Wing Chun. And so my Wing Chun takedowns are ten, tend to be some of the best in the room. And it's because I understand certain principles I learned in judo. And it is not the Wing Chun or the judo that is Jeet Kune Do. It is that space in between where they're synergizing with each other and they're informing each other and that they are changing each other to create something new, that's really JKD. There's also principles in Jeet Kune Do that, that really are important. Um, you'll never go to a Jeet Kune Do school that doesn't have centerline theory, where your hands protect your centerline by occupying it, that you don't leave your head open like this, you're here down the center. Every Jeet Kune Do school is gonna put an emphasis on simple and direct and efficiency. Kind of the thought of, well, I could punch you in the face or I could poke you in the eye. Well, poking you in the eye is gonna be a more effective tool. It's faster, has more range, and is far more devastating than a punch to the face. And so I'm gonna favor poking you in the eye versus punching you in the face. <laughs> so, so to say that, you know, oh, I study some karate and judo and I do Jeet Kune Do would be missing a lot because there's all those concepts that should dramatically change the system that you do.
Furthermore, I think taking Bruce Lee's core curriculum and completely throwing it out, you know, how did he set up his footwork? How did he move his hips? How did he develop explosiveness? His, his insane um, emphasis on keeping your body strong, all of that is still a part of Jeet Kune Do. It's just some people are going to put more emphasis on it than others. So it's dangerous to sit there and say, you know, oh, I do G I represent Jeet Kune Do rather. It's, it's, um, it is misrepresenting what Jeet Kune Do is to say that, you know, well, I study some karate and judo, so now I, I, I do Jeet Kune Do. It's like, no, there, there's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot more subtlety to it. So if this is confusing, if this does feel like a lot, um, it's true. The truth is that Bruce Lee didn't really know what Jeet Kune Do was. When you look at his history, he very clearly started off like saying, I'm making a martial arts style. And by the end of his life, he's saying, oh, I don't believe in styles at all. Um, something that uh, Dan Anasanto said that I always think resonates with me here is he said that Jeet Kune Do can be taught, but it cannot be standardized. Because ultimately, Jeet Kune Do is a living, breathing, constantly evolving thing. It's not a style because it's not trying to produce a particular kind of fighter. At the end of the day, if you look at somebody, you can tell when they do karate. They look like they do karate. If someone does Wing Chun, they look like they do Wing Chun. When someone does Judo, they look like they do Judo. And that's because those are particular styles of martial art. Whereas a Jeet Kune Do practitioner, they look different from person to person to person, at least in the Jeet Kune Do concepts groups. That you have some who are southpaw, some who are orthodox, some who hit with a vertical fist, some who hit with a horizontal fist. You have some who do everything open-handed. You have some people who favor the grappling a lot more, some people who don't. Um, so there's this kind of thought in the uh, world where we really want to say Jeet Kune Do is a style, but ultimately it's not a style. But it's also not nothing. It's not just, oh, I just do whatever I want. It's principles. It's concepts. It's a way of looking at martial arts. Another way I like to think about it is it's kind of like the scientific method. If you remember learning in middle school, and this is going to be a middle schooler's understanding of it, that the scientific method was kind of this, you have this hypothesis, and then you test that hypothesis against a control to get results, and then you see if you can duplicate those results and then uh, come to a conclusion based off of those results. Well, that way of thinking applied to martial arts tends to be what we would call Jeet Kune Do. Um, but I'm going to end this with a point that I think is really poignant because I think we make this mistake a lot. And perhaps the guy who still teaches Jeet Kune Do but doesn't use the word, perhaps he actually really gets it more than any of us. Because in uh, Bruce Lee's book, uh, The Tao of Jeet Kune Do, this guy, uh, this is effectively the Bible of Jeet Kune Do uh, philosophy. I think this has played a profound impact on a lot of martial artists' life. And right here on the very last page of the book, uh, where it gets left off, and I think its location in the book is important because it's the last thing that you read before you shut the page. It says, Learning Jeet Kune Do is not a matter of seeking knowledge or accumulating stylized patterns but is discovering the cause of ignorance. If people say Jeet Kune Do is different from this or from that, then let the name of Jeet Kune Do be wiped out, for that is what it is. Just a name. Please, don't fuss over it. So what is Jeet Kune Do? Jeet Kune Do is a form of liberation for martial artists. It is a way of looking at martial arts. It does have certain functional principles that are going to tend to be universal amongst Jeet Kune Do practitioners, but, even, but those principles are not restrictive enough to produce a stylized version of fighting that has a distinct way of doing everything. Jeet Kune Do is like MMA, but it's deeper than MMA because it's not just a fighting method, it's a thinking method. It's a way of looking at the world of martial arts every bit as much as it is an actual way of punching or of kicking. Now, if you live in the Indianapolis area or the Carmel area of Indiana, 
and you'd like to learn JKD, well, we hold classes every, almost every day of the week at my school, the School of Self-Defense. All the information you need to get started with that is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. If you don't live near me, but you're interested in still training with me, we have a limited amount of spots available for a once a week online class where we do a lot of bag work, working on the heavy bag, and you can learn some of the fundamentals of uh, punching, kicking, knees and elbows in that class as well. So if you're interested in that, once again, go to my website, contact me, and if we got space, you can sign up and we can get you uh, training with us digitally. Finally, this is going to date the video a little bit, but I still want to get it out there. If uh, you are watching this in 2021, in like the spring or summer, we do have an initiative going on right now that if anybody uh, is fully vaccinated and comes in with proof of getting the COVID vaccine, we're going to be giving away two weeks of unlimited classes to literally every single person who is fully vaccinated just to encourage people to try to take care of their community. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with a School of Self-Defense. Don't forget to rate, comment, like, subscribe, share. You know how to do Click the bell button. You know how to YouTube. Until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti. Fight on.